Hi guys, welcome to my channel where we talk about everything from tech to films and all the fun stuff in between. Okay, if you have been following the online tech world lately, then you'll sure know that this entry-level MacBook Air costing just $999 is blowing away people's minds. It just showed the world what a company can achieve if they have total control over the hardware and the software and just keep pushing the boundaries. When I unboxed it a few days ago, I was super excited to try out the first Mac ever. But besides running a few Geekbench scores, what I was oblivious about was the kind of true powerhouse this machine was. My god, I bet top level employees at Intel are probably having a tough time at the moment. They do have some monstrous catching up to do, seriously. And this time around, I'm going to answer the questions first, rather than doing it at the end of the video. Is this $999 MacBook Air all the computer which you'll ever need? Yes. If you're a student and looking for a great laptop, then is it this one? Yes. And even if you're trying to dip your toes into the Mac ecosystem for the first time, will this laptop fit the bill perfectly? Yes. And final question, for pro level applications, do I need to spend extra and get that 8 core GPU version or even go for the M1 MacBook Pro? No. Let me try to justify my decision and then you can make up your own mind. First, let's get the basic stuff out of the way. I don't think we can ever fault Apple's build quality. Yes, sometimes they are fragile, but still they are built very well. This MacBook Air is like that. It screams quality from every nook and corner. Next, considering Apple's stringent storage allocation on its base models, we here have 256GB SSD, which is more than decent. The screen is utterly gorgeous at about 2.5K resolution. I don't think you need to go all the way 4K considering how much battery drain it causes. This is a solid screen option and everything on it is beautifully vibrant. The speakers are loud enough to make this laptop a communal thing. You can happily get together with the missus and watch some Netflix and chill by just relying on the internal speakers. And once again, the device is this thin to remind you. Then the trackpad. Honestly guys, Apple trackpads have always been amazing. They've been a cut above anything else. It almost feels as fluid as the multi-touch interface on iPads. Windows ones seriously don't come even closer to this. Then the keyboard. I know Apple experimented with the butterfly keys and that turned out to be a disaster. I personally haven't used it, but heard the internet go on and on about it. But not to worry here guys, this is their successful older Magic Keyboard version. First time when I typed on it, it felt a bit strange as the keys don't have that much of a click as the Windows one do. But then it felt very smooth. It made me feel as if I was interacting with a premium piece of tech. The keys have this concave curvature in the middle which makes it feel like your fingers are hitting the exact center point of the key. It's really funny feeling in a very nice kind of way. I'm sure if you're new to the Mac, you will absolutely feel this too. I asked the missus to type and have a go at it and without me prompting anything, she said the same. Next is the operating system, Big Sur. And it feels so much like iOS, actually iPadOS. Apple did this intentionally and this is a super good decision. See, I already felt at home even though I was using it for the first time and besides a few laptop related exclusives, whilst using this OS, everything else felt very familiar. The app icons are super familiar and most of them are similar to iPad OS. Everything is neatly laid out and it is super minimal. It really feels great to even look at it. And for everyone jumping ship to the Mac OS or buying their first Mac, this is not that difficult to get the hang of. 
and you can just ask Siri and she will guide you. For instance, hey, how do you force close an app on the Mac? And there you go, you've got the answer for it. The ARM chip architecture also allows Apple to enable both iPadOS and iOS apps to run on this new MacBooks. And they work brilliantly fine. I tried LumaFusion and to be honest, it's every bit as easy and efficient to use as how it was on the iPad. However, I don't think all of them add much value as if you already have the iPhone, I don't see a point of downloading them and having them on the Mac as well. Maybe games can benefit with the keyboard and mouse control. And productive apps like LumaFusion would be obviously more effective with a keyboard and proper precision mouse control support. And next I have to talk about that amazing, amazing battery life. The M1 chip has improved this tremendously. To test out, I watched the entire three hour amazing interstellar film on Apple TV starting at 100% battery life. And do you know how much battery was left at the end? 88%. And this movie was streaming from Apple Cloud and is not downloaded onto my MacBook. Plus I have the AirPods connected via Bluetooth and a few more apps running in the background. This is really insane. You can pretty much hit Apple claim numbers without any issue. And that too on a laptop. It's so impressive really. I honestly can't praise this enough. The battery life on this new MacBook Air is just beyond. And then let me talk about that standby time. I left the laptop on sleep mode at 88% and woke up the next morning to find out that the battery is 86%. Now note guys, I didn't shut down the laptop, but I just closed the flap and put it to sleep. And then the thermal cooling system. Actually the laptop is ice cold to touch. What to do, British weather and aluminium doesn't play well together. It's 2.5 degrees when I recorded this and you could feel the laptop ice cold when you touch it. Even after such intensive usage session. My Dell would have actually functioned as a mini heater if I'd run those same applications and have that same intensive usage session. Next, let's move on to performance. Guys, see, I do not edit 8K footage. I do not transfer gigabytes of raw photo footage from my DSLR camera. And I do not render 3D graphics using Maya. I'm not that guy. And I don't think 95% of people watching this video are. And if you're that guy, then you know where to head. But yes, for the rest of us, we have seen the numbers. You have seen how this entry-level MacBook Air blew away the competition so badly that I think Intel is probably getting their top engineers to work overtime now. 4K editing is super smooth. Video playback is uninterrupted and photo editing using software like Adobe Lightroom or running pages and keynotes, it's all seamless. It's fast without any delay whatsoever. And it happily checks all those boxes for most of us users who are looking to buy a new laptop. And then gamers. Lots of people ask me if they can play Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto on a core i5 budget laptop video which I actually posted before. I know we all are trying to turn this basic machine into an all expensive gaming laptop. But personally, I've tried Asphalt 9, which played fine on this laptop. And if you check certain channels on YouTube, especially the relaxing end channel, the guy with the white gloves does play Shadow of Tomb Raider, and that looks awesome without any lag or drop frames. Several benchmark testers have not put this seven core GPU at the top with other seriously performing gaming laptops, but it still does play games like Fortnite and Shadow of the Tomb Raider with ease. Now that's quite a lot of offering from a basic machine which is not built for gaming. 
And then if you already are a part of the Apple ecosystem, then the way this is integrated with other devices is simply awesome. No other brand offers this level of seamless integration. For instance, Microsoft hasn't got a decent mobile phone operating system or Samsung does not have its own PC operating system. So the integration which Apple provides between these devices makes it super convenient and aids productivity. For instance, you can start writing something on your iPad and pick it where you left on your MacBook. You can reply to messages, make FaceTime calls on your MacBook. You can also use your iPad as an additional screen with this feature called Sidecar. Just like that, your iPad turns into an additional screen for your MacBook without the need for any extra cables. Apple has really nailed this to the T and now with their own M1 chip, instead of relying on Intel chipsets, they have so much more control over anything and I can only imagine how wild it is going to get with future updates. That 16-inch MacBook Pro, which will eventually make its way next year, I can only imagine how insanely powerful that is going to be. Maybe you can control the entire Mars landing sequence with just that machine. And finally, for most of us viewers, at this point, comparing benchmarks and performance scores, there is really no need to pay for that 8-core GPU or even consider the MacBook Pro as this entry-level MacBook Air offers such amazing performance that it is totally pointless to pay more than £999 or $999 if you're in the America. But is everything that good? There should be some trade-offs, right? Well, this is still a Gen 1 product, the first one to have Apple Silicon inside. So all applications written for the previous Intel chips will not work. And you'll have to run a compatibility module called Rosetta to make them to work. I tried a few and they worked fine. Several YouTubers did try out Photoshop and other Adobe software and mentioned that it will work fine. But if you're someone who relies on those quite a lot as your main workflow, then it's better to wait a little. And then the price. The entry-level model is still priced at $999, despite Apple now doing their own silicon chips and not paying royalty to Intel. Had this been somewhere in the $799 price range, then we would have been having a totally different conversation at the moment it would have had a bigger impact on the sales and would have put a mighty dent onto that Windows laptop sales. Sadly, we do not see any sort of price reduction. These new M1 chip MacBooks are priced same as their Intel counterparts. And then the ports, there are just two of them, so you will need an adapter. But most slim ultrabooks are adapting the same number of ports at the moment and the battery life being so amazing on the MacBook Airs will kind of free up those ports as you don't have to plug in that frequently to charge. The screen bezels are also a bit thicker. Some laptops like the XPS and the Razer offer amazing screen to body ratio but think this is going to be the inevitable future of MacBooks. And lots of people also complain about the 720p camera, but with the new image processing capability of the M1 chip, this picture which comes out of the camera isn't that bad really. So that's pretty much it. Nothing else to report. No other shortcomings. No other corners cut. Everything else is simply brilliant. Wow, what a year it was, especially for Apple. First, it started with the amazing and powerful iPad Pro, then the budget iPhone SE with an amazing camera and a lower price, then the colorful iPad Air 4, followed by four new 12 iPhone modules, concluding it with this amazing M1 Mac computers. If it wouldn't have been to the COVID situation, then this would have been an awesome year. More importantly, this year also proved to us 
with the iPad Air 4 and the M1 MacBook Air that you don't have to pay top level price for that pro features and performance. The middle tier is perfectly adequate this time. So yes guys, I found the best laptop currently available. It's made of shiny aluminium and has a bitten apple on it and adopts the name of one of the elements. That's the new MacBook Air in a nutshell. So that's all for the video guys. Do let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Drop a like if you enjoyed watching this video and a subscribe to my channel would be amazing so that I can continue working on fun and informative content for you guys. And as always, thanks a lot for staying with me until the end. I will see you in my next video. Bye for now.